One of the first uses of Taylor series is to estimate complicated functions. This is pretty much what we define them for. Taylor series are limits or Taylor polynomials, and we constructed Taylor polynomials so they would be good approximations for functions. In this video, I will illustrate with an example how to use them for this purpose. Here is the example. I want to estimate the value of root e, which is a number, with an error smaller than 0 0.001. So I want to get the first few digits of this number. Of course, one way to do this is to ask a calculator or a computer. What I'm going to explain here is exactly what your calculator or computer does when you ask it to compute this. I can interpret root e as e to the one half. So I want to compute the value of this function when x equals one half. And we know the exponential is an analytic function, so it's equal to its Maclaurin series. What I wrote here is simply the Maclaurin series expansion of the exponential evaluating when x equals a half. Now this is an exact value, but it's an infinite sum. The way I estimate an infinite sum is to truncate it, to approximate it with a partial sum. So to make this explicit, I can approximate it by the nth Taylor polynomial at one half, which could be a partial sum, and what I have left is what I call the nth remainder. And the remainder will be the error. And this will be the number I actually calculate that I use as an estimation or approximation. To make it more explicit, this is my estimation. It's the same infinite sum, but truncated, so only a finite sum. And this will be easy to compute for any value of n. This is just a finite sum. But of course, the question is, which value of n do I take? Which finite sum? Where do I truncate the infinite sum? Well, the condition I have here is that the error should be smaller than 0 0.001. I need a way to make sure the remainder in absolute values is smaller than 0 0.001. And luckily, I have a tool just for this, that is the remainder theorem. It tells me how to bound this quantity. I'm going to use Lagrange's remainder theorem. I will put a link in the description of this video, to the video where I introduced it, in case you've forgotten the statement. But what it says, in this case, is that there exists some number between 0, which is where I center my power series, and 1 half, which is where I evaluated, such that the remainder has an explicit form. That is the n plus first derivative at that point psi over n plus 1 factorial and the n plus 1 power of 1 half minus 0. Now in this case, the function I'm looking at is the exponential and all derivatives of the exponential are the same. So the n plus first derivative is simply e to the psi. I don't know what psi is exactly. I just know it's a number between 0 and a half. Now, I also don't need to know what the remainder is exactly. I just need to bound it. Given that I have this form, I know the remainder will necessarily be positive. And now, as for the other end, well, I don't know what xi is, but it's between 0 and a half. So e to the xi is at most e to the 1 half. And of course, I don't know what e to the 1 half is. That is what I'm trying to calculate. But I just need to bound it. Well, e is 2.7 something. So e is smaller than 3, and the root of e is smaller than 2. So this is at most 2. There. And now I have bounded the error by this quantity that depends on n. And what I would like to say is that this is less than 0 0.001. This is what I want, how to make that less than 0 0.001. Or equivalently, what I need is to say that 2 to the n times n plus 1 factorial must be greater than a thousand. Pick any n that will satisfy that. And factorials grow really quickly, so this is going to be possible with some small value of n. So yes, try values of n starting with 1, 2, 3, and I believe that eventually you will notice that n equals 4 works. Because 2 to the 4 times 5 factorial is 16 times 120, which is definitely greater than a thousand. There, so that's the one I'll take. So I'm going to go back and I need to use the fourth Taylor polynomial and evaluate it at one half. To conclude, 
my estimation for square root of e is the fourth Taylor polynomial for the exponential function center at zero, evaluated at one half. Or explicitly, it could be this finite sum. This is just the sum of four terms. So it is easy to perform. Compute them. And as a rational number, you will get 211 over 128. Or if we want the first few digits, they would be 1.64843. Remember how we said to do this? We wanted an error smaller than 0 0.001. So if we did things correctly, those digits should be correct, except maybe the 8 may be off by 1. And indeed, that is the case. The first few digits of the exact value of root e are 1.64843. Seven two. So we got the precision that we wanted. It was just a very simple sum of five numbers gave me an estimation for root e with an error smaller than 0 0.001. And as I said at the beginning of the video, if you ask your computer or calculator what's the value of root e, this is exactly the process that they will go through.